What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brooklyn Queen, and you can catch me on the Bootleg Kev podcast, period. Bootleg Kev podcast, special guest. She's from Detroit, the west side of sorts of Detroit, right? Yeah. And Brooklyn Queen is here. What's up, y'all? 17. Big Brook. You're 17? Yes. So how long have you been rapping? Since I was 11? No. Well, took it serious at like 11, but rapping since like five. So what like uh, inspired you to start rapping? I just love music and love entertaining people. Okay. So, so was it like you're like going to talent shows or? Were you- yeah, actually my first like ever thing on stage, I was five at a school talent show. And when I heard everybody in the crowd just screaming my name when I got done rapping, I was like, this is what I want to do. Like I want to be on stage and I want to entertain. What were you rapping at five? Do you remember? Um... Yeah, I do actually. Wait, what is it? Oh, okay. You want me to wrap it? Please. It was um five year old bars. <laughs> five year old bars. Y'all ready for this five year old bars? Uh it's Brooklyn in the house without a doubt. I'm a little kitty that you're talking about. Five years old on the way to the top on a money mission, cause I can't be stopped. Some 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 ain't got nothing on me, so put your hands in the air if you rocking with LMG. Go Brooklyn. Go Brooklyn. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. That's crazy. Five. Yeah. So you're like a yeah, you're like a little prodigy. You just came. You just did a freestyle. And I was, one taked it, killed it, caught a body real quick. <laughs> caught a body real quick. Period. And you can't be from Detroit and not be pretty good at rapping. It's right. a it's a high level rap city. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, Eminem's from there. Mm-hmm. Even like the new guys are crazy. Uh, do you even like? Does any? I can't imagine. Did you grow up listening to a lot of Eminem? Yeah, my parents played Eminem. So yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. You ever been to his trailer park? No, I have not. <laughs> well, no, I, I haven't. Have you? Well, I have. You've been there? I drove through that motherfucker for <laughs> sure. <laughs> I went to Detroit. I said, where is Eminem's trailer park? Because we're going to go see that shit. No, I've never seen it. Maybe I should. I feel like when you're from somewhere, you don't go look at all like the... Oh, for sure. I'm, like, I'm from, I'm I'm from Arizona and I've never been to the Grand Canyon. Right. It's also like four hours away. But, but you know. like, yeah. But yeah, no. I mean, Eminem's trailer park. I've been there. You know? It was, it was crazy. It was a, it was a, as, as, as terrible as you'd expect. Is real ghetto? It was just a fucked up trailer park, you know? Yeah. White, white trash ladies <laughs> fucking water in their trailer park lawn and stuff. <laughs> what about like uh, any of the new Detroit stuff? Any of that stuff influenced you? You obviously got a dope, uh, Dej Loaf is a legend out of the city. Yes. Cash Doll. Uh, yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of dope females who have came from the city. Yeah. I love them all. And one thing I love about them the most is their hustle. Mm. Like, they didn't take no for an answer, and they just kept going and did what they needed to do. Do you feel like um, being young, You, I mean, you kind of are getting like a head start on a lot of people in terms of kind of going through like music industry shit before you're 18. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you just signed with a, a good friend, brother, uncle of mine, mm-hmm. Steve Lobel. Yes. You're the first artist on Lobel Music Group. Yes, I am. Which is in conjunction with uh, Def Jam. So shout out to Steve. Yeah. Big deal. Mm-hmm. Did you know who Steve Lobel was? Like, yeah. like, you, like, how long have you known about Steve? How long have I known about him? What? Since a little bit before I met him. So when you met him, or did it, did you? Because you know Lobel's a lot. Yeah. Like he hit you. No, with that I've Steve known Lobel. about like he hit you with that aggressive Lobel <laughs> energy. <laughs> no, I've known about his history, like, um, and the people he's worked with for in sure. The past, so. Yeah. Has he told you any cool Bone Thugs and Harmony stories yet? No, not yet. I'm looking oh, forward to He's got some to wild him. ones. I'm looking forward I want to say he was in the studio with Biggie and Bone. The, what? Yeah, didn't he? Sh- yeah, he showed me the picture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got a lot of... Have you been to his house yet? No. He, I don't know if he still has the purple couches. You might be able to tell me. He's got these purple couches at his <laughs> house. They're crazy. Um, but yeah, what, what for you, like, because you have a huge social media following. You got over a million followers. How did you amass that following? Just through music or were you going viral on TikTok or... Um, I think it was just from me being like a kid star and everybody like followed me because I first went viral on YouTube for like my first two songs that I put out seriously okay. and they're over like 70 million views now. Um, so I feel like that's what people know me from. And then I grew up and they're like, oh, where's Brooklyn? Da, da, da. They follow me. And then I feel like people just like me because of the stuff I post. Damn. 70 million views. How old were you when, when that happened? Uh, 12. Jesus. Yeah. Shout out to you. Thank you. That sounds like a gold plaque or something close right. to it. That might be, that might be, our, <laughs> like, did you put that out through, like, di- like distribution services? Yeah. And, 
That sounds like you might you might need to get a little certification. Seventy right. million views is a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> has there been anybody on the music side that is kind of like a you know been a mentor for you or somebody who's giving you advice, somebody who's, you know, maybe just kind of taking a liking to you and giving you some free game? Um, probably the owner of B and B, Shop B and B. We just did a partnership with LMG, don't play with this. Um, yeah, he's, probably Peanut. He's the owner of the label. I've I would say he's yeah, him. That's what I feel. Period. Do you you know what's crazy is like there's another girl who's kinda had a similar come up. Lotto was like a she kind of was like a kid star. Yeah. And we see all these videos of her like doing challenge shows and shit. Like, mm -hmm. have you like kind of taken any notes and kind of just from afar watch what she's doing? Because she's kind of done a really good job of like successfully transitioning. Yeah. From being a kid and then like being an adult artist that we respect as an MC. And yeah, I feel like that's what, that's how I can kind of relate to her. And that's what I look at her for. Like, she was such. She was on the rap game and she was like this mm -hmm. kid. Um, and it was hard for her to go into the adult lane when she was getting older. Right. And I feel like that's the situation I'm I'm in now. I'm trying to, everybody's looking at me as like, I'm just this little girl right, still. Right, and right, I'm right. like, I'm going to be 18, y'all. Let me merge over into being, you know, in the teens, getting older. Yeah, you could join the military now. Uh, yeah, when you I'll turn pass 18. <laughs> on that. <laughs> I don't know about that. What else can you do at 18? You could buy cigarettes. No, you can't. Oh. They changed the law, actually. In you Mich used to be able to buy... In Michigan? Yeah, you used to be able to buy, like... I've never smoked, so I, I don't... I, yeah. I just... As a kid, it was like, okay, I'm 18, I can go to the porno store, and I can go to the damn <laughs> liquor store, and I can get cigarettes. Yeah, no, they changed the law. I bought cigarettes on my 18th birthday just to buy them. And I gave, I gave them to my dad. Okay. He smoked. I'm like, look, I can go to the store now and buy you cigarettes. Look mm -hmm. at this. <laughs> Isn't this nice? You don't have to get your ass up and go to the store now. I can go for you. Right. Um, for you, like, uh, how how are you constructing? Like, are you working on singles, body of work, an album? Like, what what are you working on right now? Um, right now, I'm, I'm just making a whole bunch of singles. Okay. And if we decide to make an album, then that's what's gonna happen. But lately, I've just been dropping singles. That's dope. Uh, any features in the works? Um, in the works, of course. I just did a song with Vey Vanilla, do you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from Detroit. I just did a song with Vey. Um, I have a song with Yanni. She's over there on the couch. Shout out to Big Yanni Yon. on the couch? <laughs> um, we make songs together, and we made a song called Receipts, and it did a million views in a week wow. on YouTube. So, yeah. Well, now you got Mr. Steve in your corner. He's going yeah. to pick up that phone. You're going to get some big features. Yeah, let's do it. I'm ready. Yeah, for sure. You got to work with Scott Storch now. Okay. Have you met Scott Storch yet? No. Very talented guy. He's a, uh, well, you know who Scott Storch is. Yeah. Yeah. One of the greatest producers of yeah. all time. <laughs> Anybody um, for you, like, uh, in Detroit that you kind of grew up kind of idolizing? Was there anybody? Or were you, like, just a rap fan in general? Because, you know, like, I feel like somebody like Cash Doll, somebody who, like, in the last 10 years, if you've been, like, kind of taking this serious in the last decade, Cash Doll's kind of been, like, she's, like, the fucking... She's like the biggie of Detroit, low key. Like I know she's a girl and shit, but she's so I think hard. She's the biggie. She's so hard. I think she's. I think over the last ten years, she's like the hardest rap. Like she's like the hardest female. Yeah. No, I just think period. Oh, period. The last ten years. Okay. She's been so consistent. I love Cash Doll. Yeah. Um. I mean, I love everybody in Detroit, but music wise, look up to like watch them and like yeah. you know what I'm saying. Nobody really. I. I mean, I love Dej Loaf. Dej is one I of love the most influential she, women ever. Yeah, how she she was just a hood girl, mm -hmm. blew up off of Try Me, and then she crossed over into the mainstream lane, and now she's going crazy. So. She's super going crazy. Yeah. What's homeschool like? Do you just go like log into a laptop every yeah, day and get your literally assignments? literally, it's so boring. <laughs> you just log into a laptop. Yeah. Do your work. Um, you got to get your get your points or whatever. Move up to graduate. I'm ready to get it over with. So I can just... Do you, have, you, have you tried to have artificial intelligence do your homework yet? Like chat GBT? No. They, it'll do it for you. Really? Yeah. Like if you need an essay written, you just go to chat GPT. Okay. And, let me type that And down. you literally <laughs> will tell... You could tell, tell it what the essay is about and it'll write like the whole thing for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I need Look, that. <laughs> tell your friends. I'm going to tell them all. How long have you been out of normal school? Um, I've been homeschooled since seventh grade, and now I'm a senior, so. Oh, wow. A long time. Is it hard to have, like, a, you know, like a normal social group as, like, a, a high schooler being 
kind of famous? Um, no, because I feel like everyone I grew up with through elementary and then to seventh grade, I'm still cool with. Right. And like, you know, it's I don't feel like I missed out on no social nothing. I don't think. One thing I did miss out on is high school, and that's I'm, I'm sad about that, y'all. I was about to say, do you are you sad about that? Yes, I'm very sad. There's no prom. Well, like homecoming. Somebody did ask me to prom. But, like, I want a real prom proposal. Like, don't just ask me over the phone. You want to take me to prom? Like, what do you think this Wait, is? Wait, someone asked you to prom over the phone? Yes. They said, you want to go to prom? Did no, you say, I don't, I, say, I hope you said no. No, I didn't say anything. I was like, um, let me think about it. No, you better ask me, right, if you want to take me to prom. What do you think yeah, this that's, is? Yeah, that's lazy. Right. That's terrible. Bring, so, me, bring, me, bring me a barking. So, no prom. Time. Whoa. That's also not going to happen. <laughs> We're talking, about, we're talking about high school kids here. There's no high school kid pulling up on you with a Birkin. <laughs> Listen, there might be some. Might be some. You might, not, you might need to get out of Detroit. At least go to yeah. this. Is, you know, I don't know if... Yeah, yeah. I'll get out of Detroit. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll go down to a, a Louis bag. A Louis bag is... What if it's a fake one, but the uh, thought's there? If somebody buys me a fake purse... Yeah. I'm gonna look at them like they're crazy and literally throw it at them. Cause what do you, don't ever come up to me like what, what do you if think they can't is? afford the real one, but they wanted to get then, you something nice? Then don't get it at all. You can give me some so shoes prefer, or something. Would you prefer a real coach bag? Yes, I would prefer. I love coach. Okay. I literally have like five coach bags. So I would I'm, rather have coach bag than a fake Louis bag for sure. The fake stuff's pretty close now. No, I'm I'm just the type of person I can't wear fake stuff. What if you don't know it's fake? I know it's not because I'm going in Louis Vuitton buying it. Like, right. So, like right now, like there's a lot of rappers who wear fake jewelry because nobody would ever question that it's fake. Yeah, I see that, but mm, it's like you save the money. You could put that money towards like getting yourself your. Do you have a car yet? Yeah. What kind of car is your? What's your first car? Well, my first car. My first car was a Jeep. Okay, what's your car now? Range Rover, and and hopefully I get a yours for my 18th. (laughs) You're rich. No, I'm not. I you swear I'm not. Did you ask for a Lamborghini Urus for yes. your 18th birthday? A Brooklyn Gray Lambo Urus for my 18th birthday. And I wanted um like baby pink seats. And then I wanted the calibers to be baby pink too. But that's doing too much. So <laughs> I see mom on the couch over there. What does she do? <laughs> She's got crow marks on. She, She's a drug dealer. She'll be all right. <laughs> She's a drug dealer. Stay on, I'm playing. Let me stop. Yeah. How, were you, how did you grow up? Did you grow up like pretty privileged or... Oh uh, no, my parents are from Brightmo and I don't know what that means. You, it's it's one of the worst uh I feel is one of the it's like the trenches in Detroit for okay. real, Brightmo. Ask ask somebody about it. You know Double Boy Rock is? No, I don't. No? No. no. Oh damn. I can't know every rapper in Detroit. <laughs> you know the Double Boys are? Yeah, Double Boy Cash Out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double Boy okay. Rock. Okay, so w. one of the guys, okay, yeah. Uh like most say. from some of the Double Boys are from Brightmo. Like, just look up Brightmo and you you'll see but no i didn't grow up like privileged i don't know i was normal <laughs> it's my normal i guess a lamborghini urus for your birthday though that's a it's like a quarter what's that 200 at least 250 yeah you should you know what you bad. should you know what you should get instead what? for your 18th birthday you should ask for an investment property in detroit you can get you can get 10 houses in detroit for a lamborghini urus Maybe. I'll just take the years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got time to be doing all It's that. a depreciating asset. You get mom to help run it. You guys split the, the rental income. I'm not sure how hot the Airbnb market is in Detroit, if we're being honest. But people need places to live. Yeah, mm. you're right. Do you, uh, are you like a fan of any sports out there? All the teams yeah. kind of suck. Uh, don't listen. I love the Pistons now. Don't try them. They're terrible. No, they're not that bad. Every game I go to, they win. So that's good. What's up, y'all? Bootleg Kev here, man. Got to tell you about our new sponsors at King Palm, baby. Got to shout out to them, man. We're welcoming them into the new family, man. Of course, uh, we treat all of our partners at the Bootleg Kev Podcast like family. Shout out to King Palm, man. If y'all don't know about King Palm, they're the leaders in the smoking industry when it comes to their tobacco-free blunt wraps. No nicotine, no tobacco, just good old leafs, all right? Yeah, that's right. Um, and look, their product that I love are these right here. Now, these right here are the pre-rolled tips. You just stuff them with your, your herb, your cannabis that you get from uh, Hardin. And uh, they got these terpene-infused uh, tips. Now, what they are is 
You put your weed in there, all right? You hit the fucking little pinch on that thing and you get to burst the flavor. Now, these are the Red Rains, which is like an energy drink flavor. Obviously, they got the uh, strawberry shortcake, which is also gas. Now, this is what's dope, too. There's just so many lines of these rolls. Uh, shout out to the leaf tubes. You can get these blueberry, these big blue grape fusion joints. So much you can get, man. So many products. Uh, check out your local 7-Eleven, your local smoke shop, all that. But you could also go to kingpalm.com right now and get everything online delivered right to your door for half off, 50% off if you use that promo code bootleg. That's right. Shout out to King Palm, man. We're talking about essential smoking. Uh, when it comes to like just getting that clean smoke, it's not too harsh, organic. You ain't putting nothing crazy in your lungs. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to King Palm. No tobacco. No nicotine. Just straight look. And I got to shout them out too because can we just take a, a good look at this? You know, we got multiple size King Palm hitters over here. That thing right there is like a goddamn... Jesus. That's a fucking boy right there. You know what I mean? Shout out to King Palm. That's a King Palm leaf right there. Stuff with some fire. Some fire, all right? So look, right now you're going to want to go to uh, kingpalm.com. Uh, use that promo code bootleg, get half off whatever you need, smoking accessories, leafs, some of these awesome uh, pre-rolls that they have that you just stuff your stuff in, stuff your stuff in, you know what I mean. Um, kingpalm.com, 7-Eleven, your local smoke shop, all that. Make sure you follow them online at King Palm and check them out. Speaking of stuff that you're stuffing, shout out to my bookie, man. My bookie, you already know, mybookie.ag. I'm riding with the Phoenix Suns, goddammit. Them Suns going all the way. Uh, if you are like me and you like to, uh, you know, put a friendly wager on some sports, which I do a lot. I've been using my bookie for about 10 years now. Uh, you can go do the same thing right now. Now, this is what's dope about my bookie. Go to mybookie.ag. It's the online sports book. Not only is it an online sports book, they got the blackjack. They got the whole casino situation, craps, roulette, whatever you're into, you can play it right at mybookie.ag. And if you use the promo code bootleg when you sign up, bootleg you'll see it down below when you sign up you'll get that first deposit bonus now get a new account mybookie.ag when you sign up bootleg is the promo code first deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars you put in money they give you money it's that simple all right there's so many ways you can win money of course they got nhl right now the playoffs are happening in hockey if you're from fucking canada and you care about a terrible boring sport also basketball NBA playoffs are booming right now. Put all the money on the future for the Suns to win the championship. Thank me later. I got Suns versus Celtics in the uh, um, finals. Also, baseball. Another atrociously boring sport, but a great sport to gamble on. All right? So what you're going to want to do, go to mybookie.ag. Use that promo code BOOTLEG right now and get uh, your first deposit bonus unlocked. Speaking of unlocked. Unlock your cock. <laughs> Go to bluechew.com right now. It is summertime. If you're dealing with erectile dysfunction, ED, if you will, maybe you got stress at work. Maybe you're tired of looking at the same chick. Maybe you just need a little pep in your step. Um, you need to get on that blue chew, man. You don't need to do anything, but it'd be nice to have the option to. So go to bluechew.com right now. Use the promo code bootleg and get the first month supply of Blue Chew for free. What is Blue Chew? Well, Blue Chew is a uh, chewable. Gets delivered to your door in a discreet package. No doctor's appointments, no doctor's visits. And uh, it has the same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis. So we're talking about getting your dick hard here. In case that went over your head, you know, it won't go over your head once you take it. I promise you that. Uh, Blue Chew uh, also is uh, incredible because not only does it come in the blue chewable flavor with the same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis, but it also has a mint chewable flavor, which is the same active ingredient as Levitra. All right. All this, if you're questioning, I don't know, I don't want to spend no money. Uh, does this shit work? Look, yes, it works. And you don't have to spend money if you use the promo code bootleg at bluechew.com because it's going to get delivered right to your house. They're going to give you a month supply of for free, you just got to pay $5 shipping. That's it. The Blue Chew's coming to your house. No awkward doctor's appointments. No awkward doctor's visits. It's all online. BlueChew.com. Thank me later. 
Thank me later. Let's get back to the interview. When you say not that bad, <laughs> the Detroit Pistons are an atrocious. Stop! You can't down. They listen. play in the in the five dollar hot and ready pizza arena. Yeah. By the way, have you seen it? Do they do? Are if you go to the Little Caesars Arena, mm-hmm. are the pizzas five bucks in there? No. They're more. <laughs> They're more. Yeah. That's bullshit. Yeah. If I was to go to a Little Caesars Arena, I expect the prices to be consistent, and I expect the pizza to be hot and ready everywhere. Yeah. I is, get it. Little Caesars is a Detroit company, right? Yes. Shout out to it's a you know it's a fucking staple. Yeah, shout out Little Caesars. Even though I don't eat the pizza, I only eat the pepperoni bread or the breadsticks. Y'all need to fix. Your Have you met the pizza. Detroit Dust guy? Detroit Dust. The urban survival dude. This is like the guy who dresses like a cop and he's got the people's eyebrows. Oh my eyebrow. gosh, yes. I. <laughs> you met him? Yeah. He's like a. I went over there. He fucking beat my ass. Really? Yeah. He, yeah. He didn't touch me. See, he I like wouldn't let that me slide. Around. I, I was, I, he's he's legit. I wouldn't let that slide. Yeah. Do you? What do you think <laughs> is the biggest misconception about Detroit? Um. Everybody thinks it's just such a bad place. Right. Like, they think you come to Detroit, like, everybody's like, oh, my God, how does it feel growing up in Detroit? Normal. How does it feel growing up in Atlanta? Like, right, right. it's the same thing. I love I Detroit. Feel like. It was great. Um, I mean, it's normal to me. Everybody thinks, like, if you come to Detroit, you're going to get robbed or, I mean, you can get robbed anywhere. You can get robbed anywhere. Like, you know how many people are getting robbed in Beverly Hills right now? I was going to say, people think the same thing about Cali. But like, like, yo, everyone's getting robbed out in L.A. right now. I'm like, not everybody. Just the assholes who walk around with a <laughs> bunch of jewelry on their neck. <laughs> right. No, but for real. I mean, Detroit, it's normal to me, I feel like. You can get robbed anywhere. You can get killed You know what anywhere. else is normal about the Detroit? Uh, it, the food is very normal. Normal? Yeah. What do you mean by <laughs> It's not great. It's just normal. It is great. Come to my house. You're, you're going to be good. No, I, listen, I went to a bunch of Coney's searching for... You know, the mystique of the Detroit Coney. And it was just a lot of normal food. But what did you get? I got some Coney. I got some fries. I got a cheesecake. I got a, a burger. I got a patty melt. I got... What? No. Uh, See, you can't go to Coney Island and order the normal things you would get everywhere else in the world. So what do I order? Boom. Go in, get you some chili fries, or you can get some chili cheese fries, put mm. some mustard on them, boom, so good. Normal. Uh, what else? Corned beef egg rolls. Okay, now that sounds like not normal. Corned beef egg rolls with the pink sauce from Nikki D's. Get the pink salad dressing See, I sauce. went to Nikki D's. Nikki D's was not it. Yes, you didn't order the right thing. I'm Maybe telling I didn't. you, you didn't order the right thing. This is the first place I went to. We're, it's a, the one by there's a place there named Truth, right? And it's kind of diagonally across the street, right? Mm-hmm. That shit was weak. No, it's not. You oh. <laughs> didn't order the right thing. I'm telling you. You ordered something, right, Cyrus? What'd you get? Well, you got he got an omelet. Yeah. An omelet. He's he's a vegetarian. Listen, you got to get an omelet, put chili on top with feta on top of that, and then you're yeah, you're good. I think the best food we had out there was in the uh, food court at the MGM Grand. <laughs> really? Are you serious? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was some noodle. Y'all place. are going to the wrong places. Have you been to Views? Hmm. We went to a, a burger place that had deep fried Doritos. Doritos? Deep oh, yeah. fried stuffed Doritos. That, that, that sh- was actually deep. It was all right. Yeah. It wasn't bad. Uh, pizza? Okay. Pizza Which Cat. Is, pizza Cat? Mm-hmm. Mm. You got to go to Pizza Cat. You got to go to Pizza Cat. Views. Um, uh, Baby Tron took us to this fake Raising Cane's. And it was really good. It was called like Uncle Joe's or Uncle Somebody's or Cousin Joe's. I know what Joe's. you're talking about. I it think, was yeah. super good. It was better than Raising Cane's. Really? Oh, my God. It was amazing. And they had shrimp. So they had chicken and shrimp. Oh, yeah. Mm. Y'all go to... You ever have Raising Cane's? Joe's, yes. I love Cane's. It is good. Ever plan on moving out of Detroit? Um. Well, I kind of did halfway. I mean, I still live there and then I live in LA, so... Oh, you live here too? I go back and forth, yeah. Yeah. So which which place are you... Do you feel like you're safer at? Because I, I felt a lot more safer in Detroit. <laughs> I feel safer in Detroit, too. Y'all don't know. What I've been through out here with these crazy people on the street, I would never I say, I was hanging out in Detroit. I saw no homeless. I mean, I saw a few homeless people, but, but like, it was not like L.A. No. When I tell you, literally, I've been attacked in L.A. Somebody, literally, they swarmed our car in a 7-Eleven parking lot. And then they was hanging on our windshield while we were driving. The Range Rover? To, no, 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 no. This was somebody's, uh, somebody else's car. But like they were hanging were, on the windshield. These were uh, fentanyl people? 
I don't know what they were. Hmm. I don't homeless know. Folk? They were crazy. I don't know if they were homeless. You got to stay out of downtown. You know the people that just hang out in the... I wasn't even in downtown. It was in Hollywood. Yeah. Hollywood's crazy. I just said... Stay in the valley. Yeah. Let me, go, let me go to Calabasas. Yeah. It's crazy in Hollywood. Yeah, you're too bougie for Hollywood. <laughs> I'm not bougie, y'all. You you want a Lamborghini Urus That's for your not birthday? That's bougie. That's wild. That's not bougie. You know how I many people want a Lambo truck? That's not. I mean, want, but I feel like you're gonna get it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I have a good chance. That I feel like I'm gonna get it. Uh, when is uh, you 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 just talked about your new record with her on the couch? But uh, how many new songs are ready to go? And when is the music dropping? I have like 20 songs ready to go. Okay. And music is dropping very, very, very soon. I just posted um, a sneak peek of my new song, Back That Ish Up. Don't know which day I'm going to drop it yet, but the video's ready, the song's ready, everything's ready to go. Nice. Are you, uh, are you dating? Am I dating? I'm single as a Pringle. Okay. And ready to mingle. No, I'm Don't saying. say that. <laughs> I'm not ready to mingle, You're going to give mom a heart attack over there. No, I'm single as a Pringle. I've dated before, but... You should stay single. Yeah. It's time to focus on your career right yeah. now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm hmm Yeah. And then, like, one day, then, like, when, when you have, like, a bunch of plaques on the wall, mm -hmm. when, you're, when your house looks like Steve Lobel's living room, okay. that's when you can settle down, you know? Okay. But live your life. Get to 30. Yeah, I don't want to be tied down to nobody. Yeah. Like, you're not going to be controlling me, telling me what I can and can't do. Mm. Mm -mm. Who's your favorite rappers right now? Ooh, Lotto, Megan Thee Stallion, mm. um, uh, uh, City Girls, of course. I didn't say female rappers, but if all your favorite rappers are female, that's great too. Okay, Tupac. Okay. Um, uh, 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 Lil Baby, of course. Do you listen to NBA Youngboy? Yes, I love Youngboy. Thanks for reminding me. I'm just wondering because I feel like every 17 year old in the world is like that's all they listen to is that and Yeet. And who? Yeet. Um, who is that? You don't know about Yeet? No. <laughs> He's popping right now. <laughs> I don't know who that is. He's got the Minion song. The what? Sing he it. always has a Pooh Shiesty on. He's like the, like, he look, I think he's Mexican. He's fucking huge right now. No, he's, I don't know where, you don't know about Yeet? No, you're going to have to show me. He's at a concert. They're going crazy. Oh my God, they're going crazy for this kid. Mm -hmm. Like, you go to a Yeet show, it's just a bunch of dusty white chicks with <laughs> beat down forces. One thing about it, one thing about it. In L.A., you can wear beat up forces and nobody will say nothing. But if you wear some forces like that in Detroit, <laughs> they're going to clown you. They're going to tell you, park them right there. And you know, you know how to park forces? I don't. Literally, if somebody be like, oh, you need to park those, you're supposed to take your forces off and just leave them there because they're that bad. What if you don't have socks on? You just leave your forces there. Also, if you don't have socks on and you're wearing shoes, you're a fucking scoundrel. What's up, guys? Hey, um, if you are watching this and it's April 20th, 420, I'm going to be hanging out at Hardeen today. That's right. Put the flyer up, LaRock. I'll be at Hardeen um, hanging out all day today. Um, the craziest, most just luxurious, illest dispensary in the world located right in Los Vegas, Nevada. Now, Hardy in Las Vegas, they are our family. They sponsor the podcast. I love those guys dearly. And when I say that it is the best place I've ever walked into to buy premium cannabis, I'm not lying. Best customer service, best bud tenders, best bud to put in your king palm. Um, and uh, just overall, man, just a great experience. Um, so uh, what y'all need to do is go follow him online. Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. Follow him on the gram. We got a lot of dope stuff in the works. They actually just opened a, a, a fire podcast studio. So we're going to be doing a lot of content in Vegas. Live from Hardeen. They also just dropped a fucking tennis shoe with Fila. They got dope fly gear. Um, man, premium cannabis. The best selection. Culture. Sniff. You walk in that man, listen, they got, I'm not even lying to y'all. Hardeen has their own signature scent and it smells good. I keep a bottle of it in my car, literally. Maybe twice a day I spray that, whoosh, get that Hardeen whiff. It smells amazing. So look, make sure you go to Hardeen. Uh, if you're in Vegas, get in that Uber, get in that cab. As soon as you touch down, say, take me to Hardeen. The, the taxi drivers, 
The Uber drivers, they know exactly where it is because it's the hottest spot in Vegas. They're going to take you straight there. You're going to tell them I sent you. They're going to get you situated real nicely, all right? Harding underscore Las Vegas. Go show them some love. Go to hardinglasvegas.com. Got to give a shout out to our OGs, my dogs at Odd Socks, baby. They've been fucking with us from day one, um, and they've been dropping so many crazy dope new like socks. You know, first of all, can we talk about Beavis and Butthead? They just dropped the Beavis and Butthead socks and draws. Let's take a check. Just a nice little peek at the Beavis and Butthead draw skis, bro. Ooh. Come on, man. They also just dropped Coca-Cola. We got Scarface. We got Reese's. We got the big fucking Lebowski. So many dope socks. The most comfortable socks in the world. The most comfortable underwear in the world. And check this out. Right now, you can get 20% off. That's 20% off at checkout at oddsocksofficial.com using the promo code bootleg. So go right now, oddsocksofficial.com. My first uh, uh, suggestion would be get you a pair uh, or a pack of the Odd Socks Basics, the black and the whites. Those are my go-tos. And then you got to fuck with some of these big Lebowski socks. And they just got Coca-Cola. They got the Scarface boys. Like, what are we talking about, man? What are you waiting on? They are the most comfortable socks in the world. Um, so if you're not wearing odd socks, you're just cheating yourself. You know what I mean? You're really cheating yourself. They got fucking South Park. Come on, bro. What are we talking about? Go to oddsocksofficial.com right now. Use the promo code bootleg. Save 20% off at checkout on the most comfortable socks in the world. Or don't and keep torturing yourself with those shitty socks you're wearing right now. Be a damn shame. Anyway, let's get back to the interview. <laughs> Yanni, right over there. <laughs> she don't wear socks. You don't she wear, don't socks? wear socks on her shoes. Yo, your feet gotta stink something crazy. <laughs> oh, no socks? Not even the little invisible anklets? <laughs> yeah, stop hanging out with her. <laughs> Fuck the forces. She got some stink ass feet for sure. <laughs> She's gonna have to park her, her hooves. She got the <laughs> She's gonna have bunions. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, do you have like a rap crew like that like you're forming? Is this a part of your crew, this girl? Like are you guys Yeah, she's a part of my crew. Do you guys of have course. a name? Like, you know, there's like oh. the Wu Tang clan, there's like dipset. No, we're not like a, a group. We're like individual people, but I mean you could just call us bad bitches, I guess. I can't call you that. You're not um, old enough to be called that. Why? You're 17. Listen. You're a respectable you can be young a bad lady. Bitch. You can be a bad bitch at the age of... You're res so I've been a bad bitch since I was born. That's not true. It is. That's, that's, I always thought I was bad. Hmm. Well, the uh, new music's coming soon. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to talk about? Um. Anything you're working on? I'm just working on new music. Uh, like I said, we're going to Vegas today. Um, yeah, it's a great place for a 17-year-old to go do absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Yo, I'm going to be walking You're just going to go hang out on great. Fremont Street. Go to Fremont Street. Go to the buffets. Um, go zip the lining. Pool, the pools be off the hook. I mean, the pools, I guess that you... I mean, yeah, maybe. But can you get me in a club? No, I wouldn't either. That's a felony. I'm all about risking someone's liquor license. I own a nightclub. What would I look like? We could we could just sneak in the back door. You know how many clubs I snuck in the back door? I don't <laughs> snitch. Don't sn zero. The answer is zero. <laughs> no, the clubs in Detroit. Uh, what is it? Club Blue. You you have to be eighteen to get in. Wow, Club Blue. You have to be eighteen to get in. They let me in. Well, I think if you are performing, yeah, you're allowed to go in. Okay, so will you give me a performance at a club in Vegas so then I can go in? Uh, I mean, I could ask. Okay. Yanni, you ready to go to the club? You got, your your guy Steve <laughs> Lobel. Steve Lobel will get you to goddamn the White House if you give him enough time. Okay. He'll sneak you right in. <laughs> He'll be like, yo, Barack, this is my new artist right here. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my guy, Maniac Lobel, man. Hey, appreciate you pulling up, Brooklyn Queen. Go uh, follow her, Brooklyn Queen 03. Yes, Brooklyn Queen 03. Even Michelle though you were born in 05. Yep. Mm -hmm. The year I graduated high school. Yeah. Class of 05. Wait, so when you graduated, you had a kid? When I had a kid when I was 17. Okay. So I already had, well, my baby's mom was pregnant 
when I graduated. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Are you doing, you're over here doing math? You're like, wait a minute, you said your son was my age. Yeah, so, so you, you had gra- a kid in high school. So you were a bad kid in high school. That's not bad. Yeah. Well, nonetheless. Back in y'all's day, that's not bad. O five 5 babies are in the building. Period. Go follow her, Brooklyn Queen 03, new music on the way. And uh, let's get your friend a fucking some odd socks. Yeah. Yanni, <laughs> you need some socks. <laughs> we got to get her some odd socks because now that you said it, it does smell kind of crazy in here. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Boom. <laughs>